Greetings and salutations. I'm Poetic Heretic, and today I am tackling an interesting subject having to do with beliefs. From what I have observed, most people seem relatively clueless about where their beliefs come from or how they form. Even worse, so few realize that they can consciously question their beliefs. Every day people carry around negative beliefs, such as that they are worthless, undeserving, hopeless, or whatever. When if they would just stop and consciously analyze those beliefs for a moment, they would realize they make absolutely no sense. But this video is not about questioning negative beliefs. This video is about something much more complicated than that, with the most far-reaching of implications. The fundamental idea we are working with here is that beliefs attract like beliefs. Let that sink in. Beliefs attract like beliefs. To demonstrate the power of this, take this example. Say someone finds out through some research and investigation that 9-11 was an inside job. They now believe it, so that is their belief, that 9-11 was an inside job. I am not interested right now in the validity or non-validity of that belief. Instead, I am only interested in this person's belief that it is true. So now the individual in our example holds this powerful belief in this conspiracy. But what the person likely doesn't know is that the belief itself is now drawing to it similar beliefs. Suddenly, conspiracies seem more likely to be real. After all, if 9-11 was in fact an inside job, then what other conspiracies out there might be true? So the individual in our example does some more digging, and suddenly he finds four or five more conspiracies that appear to have many facts backing them up. The momentum of the belief is getting stronger and stronger, likely without even the conscious realization of the individual. But here is where things get really sinister. Unless the person in our example is extremely clever, and maybe even if he is extremely clever, his original belief in the 9-11 conspiracy is making it easier to overlook evidence that contradicts the likelihood of the reality of these new conspiracies he is considering, while simultaneously making it easier to accept evidence that supports the likelihood of the reality of these new conspiracies he is considering. Things that once seemed somewhat outlandish now start looking plausible, even probable. Now I can imagine what some of those listening are thinking. You think that I am trying to say that believing in conspiracies is delusional. Actually, that's not what I am saying at all. In fact, far be it from me to say such a thing. If you have watched a lot of my other videos, you know my take on conspiracies. I am not calling anyone delusional here. What I am wanting to point out is that the devil, as they say, is in the details. So for the sake of those of you I just addressed, let's look at the opposite scenario. Let's take someone who believes in virtually every conspiracy they have ever heard of. Then let's say one day this person discovers evidence contradicting the reality of one of the conspiracies he believes in. Now his belief is, this conspiracy that I previously believed to be true is false. That then quickly becomes, if that conspiracy turned out to be false, what others may actually be false? Now the reverse kind of belief is gaining momentum. Now, he does more digging and finds more contradictory evidence to various conspiracies he previously believed in. Now, just like before, it is easier to accept evidence of his new belief that conspiracies may be false, and easier to reject evidence that conspiracies may be true. And again, he likely has no conscious awareness whatsoever of the momentum that his new belief is gaining. I am again going to attempt to read some of your minds. You are thinking that there is no way beliefs can gain such power if one is skeptical and weighs the evidence carefully. You probably believe that you are skeptical and weigh the evidence carefully. You may even believe that you have it all figured out. Well, I am suggesting that you are only partially right. While it is true that weighing the evidence for and against anything can help to slow down the momentum and power of a belief, it never negates it entirely. That is the point I'm really wanting to drive home. It never negates it entirely, even if you think that it does. You are always looking at reality through the lens of your already held beliefs. Even if you truly believed in nothing, as soon as you start looking at anything, it won't be long before you form an opinion about what you are looking at, and as that opinion attracts like opinions, it strengthens into a belief and then beliefs. There is seemingly no escape from this process. The conscious mind will always try to sort out and make sense of everything. It is my belief that that is how people can come to such extreme conclusions. They allow the momentum of their beliefs to carry them to greater and greater extremes. We might think it's an attractive idea that we can look at both sides of everything and try to find the truth, so that what we believe on every subject is only the truth, 
but for whatever reason, that appears to be the opposite of how the human mind and especially the universe at large operate. In many cases, however, this is actually a quite good thing. It is not healthy to hold contradictory beliefs. In fact, it is detrimental to one's mental, emotional, and even physical health. In extreme cases, it can lead to various forms of mental illness and personality disorders. If someone, for example, held the belief that they are not powerful, and not only are they not powerful, but they have little to no chance of becoming powerful, in their desperation to feel better, their conscious mind may split, in a sense, and formulate a belief that they are extremely powerful, in an effort to compensate for the unwanted belief. So now this person holds two very contradictory beliefs in their conscious mind. One says, I am powerful, and the other says, I am powerless. And this person switches back and forth between the two. This is perhaps one of the most unhealthy mental states one can be in, because it leads to so many problems. The contradictory beliefs have not been consciously analyzed. Fortunately, the simple remedy in this situation is to do just that. Take an honest, no-nonsense look at the beliefs one holds and identify any contradictions, and then make an effort to resolve the opposing beliefs. So it is my theory that the conscious mind's attempt to find harmony in its beliefs may very well be the biggest factor in the process that causes one to believe in things without proper analysis. The conscious mind's attempt to find harmony pushes one away from objectivity and towards subjectivity. This is not necessarily always the case, from what I can see, but it certainly appears to be what is happening much of the time. Regardless, however, you could have the most objective mind of any human that ever lived, and yet your opinions and beliefs would still be working against your objectivity, because opinions and beliefs are not interested in what is real, they are interested in that which is like them. But now we come to an even deeper problem. There are those who say there is no objective reality. They say that because thought creates reality, and beliefs create reality, and beliefs attract like beliefs, then there is no truth. Instead, anything you focus upon with enough attention will eventually become your truth. That is what they say. I am not saying that is true, but after having looked into these matters for a long time, I am beginning to suspect that may indeed be true. Perhaps the only truth is that all truths are the true truths. I'm not sure. Just to be safe, I generally still try to be as objective as possible whenever I am considering things. But I also cannot ignore what I have learned over the years through both my own experiences and that of others about the power of beliefs. While this subjective-objective paradox does indeed remain more or less a paradox in my mind, the main point I'm wanting to get across in this video is, be careful what you believe. Know and understand the power of beliefs. Consciously analyze your own beliefs. Since beliefs at the very least create your perception of reality, choose them very carefully. Choose them wisely. Don't just believe anything without considering the implications for your own mental health and overall well-being. And even if you believe something unwanted to be objectively true, remember that you do not have to focus on it all the time, and that in doing so, if the belief creates any negative emotion in you whatsoever, you are doing harm to yourself and potentially others by continuing to hold that belief. I am not advocating that anyone put their head in the sand, I am only advocating that you take the information I have presented to you here and make up your own mind about it. After all, you are the one who ultimately decides what you believe. This has been a look at the power and influence of beliefs by Poetic Heretic. Don't forget to rate, comment, favorite, and subscribe, and thanks for watching.